And while that is every time. Great. Okay. And <laughs> and then we are ready. We have to have a reel of every single time that happens. <laughs> I'm Sasha, and welcome back to another episode of Alt Baking Bootcamp with Well and Good. Today, we're gonna make a vegan chocolate mousse with a very not so secret ingredient, avocados. They have a very naturally occurring high level of good fats, and that's gonna lend to the lusciousness, the creaminess, and the voluminousness you would get in your normal dairy infused mousse, but this one is gonna have no dairy. So with a recipe this simple and with only six ingredients, I like to make my job even easier by measuring everything out ahead of time. That way when I dump it all into the food processor, I'm just picking up one thing, pouring it in, and then tossing it at you. First things first, you wanna keep your avocados intact until you're ready to use them because as soon as their flesh hits oxygen, it tends to oxidize and get a little brown and mealy and we do not want any brown or mealy parts in our beautiful avocado mousse. So I've got three just under ripe avocados here and I think some people have their own variations of how to cut one, but I like to take a sharp knife make a line right down the center and move the avocado around the knife, keeping my hand on the furthest opposite side of the blade, like so. Once you've done that, you've got a nice little seam there. You can twist it, voila, it's perfect. So I have two tips for the ripeness of your avocado and how to assess if you've got the exact amount of ripeness that we are looking for in this recipe. It has a little nub, this little guy, I like to call it a nub. If it's stuck and a little loose, almost like a loose tooth, that's perfect. And you're also looking for this darker green circle on the outer edges of the avocado, and then a lighter green flesh towards the pit. This is probably not the most professional way to do this, but I like to just lodge my knife into the pit, twist it against the flesh, and then once you've got it, just knock it into your little compost bowl. Don't try this at home unless you are prepared to use a sharp knife. So without further ado, we're going to load everything in. Um, and just like a little insider tip, always go with the most liquid ingredients first because if I were to pour the cocoa powder in first, it would likely get lodged in and underneath my blade. And this will just help transition it right into the mousse. So in order to ensure a super smooth texture, I load the processor up with only half of the avocados and then I whirl it around for about 45 seconds and then I add the rest in. And we'll do that with the melted chocolate as well. fun game I like to play, which is which way does the lid go? That way. Alrighty, so, oh, it's actually pretty smooth already. Wow. Um, there are a few chunks of avocado in here, but other than that, it's very pudding-like. And as soon as we add the rest of the avocado and the melted down chocolate chips, you're gonna get that really luscious, deep, dark chocolate teeness. <laughs> All right. We are looking pretty smooth and luscious as is. And I'm gonna give y'all a peek here. And you can see that it's like pretty reminiscent of like a milk chocolate snack pack pudding situation, which we love and find very delicious on its own, but that's not what we're trying to make today. So 
We're gonna let this hang out in here and we're going to melt our chocolate chips over a double boiler. Before we melt down our chocolate, um, like every good chef, we're gonna clean up our space and make room for the end product. I'll see you in a second. Wonderful, we love a clean workspace. And now it's time for some fun. So I've got equal parts dark chocolate chip and semi-sweet chocolate chip, both dairy free. Um, I like it to be a little bit more sweeter and creamier, so I'm gonna go with a heavier pour of the semi-sweet chocolate chip. But if you want like that bitter, luscious, really rich dark chocolate flavor, then you could just switch up the ratios. We've got our double boiler already set up. It's super high tech. It is one very small saucepan and one very small mixing pan layered on top of one another. And you've heard this spiel from me at least a thousand and one times. We've got some water in the saucepan that we are going to bring to a boil. And once it's boiling, the steam will gradually heat your metal mixing pan. And that will then gradually melt down the chocolate that's inside of it. You want to avoid any direct heat contact with the chocolate chips because typically it melts down so quickly that it almost burns. I'm going to go with all my semi-sweet chocolate chips and only half of the dark chocolate. I'm just watching for the very initial layer to start melting along the bottom of the bowl. And in order to avoid any burning, we're gonna keep this thing moving pretty quickly and keep the heat molecules also moving with the chocolate. Once it's all completely melted down and all you can see are smooth, beautiful ribbons of melty chocolate, you can take it off the saucepan, but be careful because all that steam that you've trapped in there to melt the chocolate with is going to escape. So pull away from the pan and run away as quickly as you can. You wanna to continue to mix it and ensure that you have a heat proof surface to put it on top of. That way we can just add it right into our food processor and finish this bad boy. All right, the melted chocolate can go right into there. I like to just kind of distribute it around. The food processor is gonna do that for you anyways, but it doesn't hurt to be thorough. And I hate using a wooden spoon to scrape things out of a bowl. That's just not what they're intended for. They're there to mix. So we're gonna make our little swap here for the spatula. And then you can get every little last bit in there. That's a sizable amount. And you can only get it if you use this silicone spatula. Ta-da. Lid secured, 45 seconds, go. Wow, looks pretty great. But we are going to do our due diligence, make sure that we scrape down the sides of our bowl and then let her go for another 30 seconds and then we'll be ready to place in our chilling bowl, put it in the refrigerator and let it set. Pretty good to me. So what we're gonna do is transfer this into a big mixing bowl, something that you can put in the refrigerator and let it chill and set for the next 90 minutes. And then we're gonna clean up our workspace. So as you can see, it's super luscious, super smooth, no little avocado lumps. You might not even know there was avocado in this unless I told you. But this, it just really emulates that texture that you would get from the heavy cream. And you don't have to worry about dairy intolerances. And you can technically count this as your veggie servings because, oh no, your fruit servings because avocado's a fruit. Yum. 
We wanna chill this for a minimum of 90 minutes. In an ideal world, you could leave it overnight because that just gives it time to really develop that structure and that beautiful mousse-like texture. I'll see you in a little bit. Oh my goodness, it looks wonderful. Perfect mound of chocolatey goodness. Nice and chilled to perfection. And the cool thing about this recipe is you can make it as low or highbrow as you want. I often just put it into some mason jars and I have a few bites for breakfast, for a snack, post-lunch, post-dinner, really at any time. So we're gonna go super, super fancy, scoop it into these fun little martini glasses, add some fresh berries, and then shave some chocolate on top. The fun begins. I'm just using a regular metal spoon here. If you wanted to use something different, you could. It's really very low stakes recipe here. You're just trying to make this like beautiful mound, leaving space obviously for the berries and the chocolate. And this recipe is so rich and delicious that you actually don't need like a full, big serving of it. A couple spoonfuls is gonna satisfy your chocolate craving almost immediately. What do you think? You can also tell immediately that the texture is so much firmer and more structured than when we initially put it to chill. And that's exactly what we want. Ooh, I think this might be my favorite glass. We're gonna taste out of this one. Wonderful. Okay. So, I'm just gonna put a few berries in strategic places. You wanna have the perfect berry to mousse ratio. And again, there's not more than a few spoonfuls in each one of these glasses. I'm gonna go with the less is more cliche here because truthfully, that's gonna be true of this recipe. So cute. All right, and now to elevate it just a little bit more, we're gonna take this super fancy chocolate bar. Willy Wonka himself sent it to me and I definitely got the golden ticket. What does that mean? That I get to eat all this mousse by myself. So any bar of chocolate will do. Anything that you'd prefer, I'm doing just a basic dark chocolate bar that's meant for baking, and this is a microplane. Um, if you don't have a microplane at home, a basic like potato grater or cheese shaver will also work. You just have to be a little bit more careful with how you use the blade against the chocolate. I feel very professional right now. Voila, we're done. And we've got chocolate shavings everywhere. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. All right. This is the most beautiful looking one to me, so I'm gonna give this one a try. I'm gonna make sure I get equal parts mousse, raspberry, and chocolate shavings. Oh my God, it's so tasty. It just melts in your mouth, and the contrast of the tart, fresh raspberry with the super rich creaminess of the mousse, oh, it's perfection. Take another bite, please hold. Mmm. As sophisticated and beautiful as this recipe is, it's also really functional. So if you're vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, this is the recipe for you. It's so easy and it's so delicious and you just have to try it. Mmm. For more avocado magic and delicious recipes just like this, subscribe to Well and Good. Cheers.